Okay, so I don't have very many slides. I think maybe um, 15 or so. And it would be nice to go through and, and uh, finish off perhaps by um, sort of getting into a bit of a discursive space and find out what questions people have. Because I know that during the process of the PhD, certainly sort of in the middle of it, I had a lot of questions that were actually very straightforward, kind of practical issues about how you did things. And it would be good to be able to uh, re reflect back some of this stuff um, in the form of, of questions, perhaps to the, to the three of us. Um, so my, um, let me just get rid of this annoying thing. The title of, of my um, PhD was Between Furniture and Infrastructure. And, and I guess uh, I, came to, I came to the research after about 15 years of, of practice and teaching um, with a sort of sense of frustration. And actually, at my examination in Ghent, I started with a confession that I never kind of intended to be an architect. And um, I sort of guess I am an architect because it's the closest match to what I like doing, but it's not sometimes a particularly good match. In fact, sometimes, certainly at the beginning of this process, um, I felt it was getting a pretty poor match. Um, and I was more interested in the bits of the profession that it was kind of giving up. So things like planning, uh, landscape, um, sort of bits of, or ideas about cities that I suppose 20 or 30 years ago in certainly in UK architectural discourse was certainly seen as very much part of the discipline, um, but less and less so. I remember the uh, Chipperfield, going to the Chipperfield Biennale in Venice and, and sort of feeling, well, is that it? You know, because it kind of seemed to exclude the bits of stuff that I was interested in, the city as a sort of, you know, relatively uncontrolled um, phenomena. Uh, and I've always been interested either or both in teaching and in practice in, in kind of uh, a generalist um, attitude so that we've always kind of worked right across the scales quite purposefully um, from the very small level of interventions in say historic buildings or kind of doing small projects which we started off obviously as a young practice doing. But also at the other end, uh, certainly through teaching and then increasingly through invented projects or self-initiated projects, thinking about the other thing that I was particularly interested in, which was how is one strategic? How can one think in a strategic way at the very large scale of operation? And critically, what's the bridge between the two? So it's getting increasingly rarer for the same practice to do work across that scale. Um, certainly in the kind of work that I'm interested in pitching for, the successful paradigm is increasingly the multidisciplinary kind of combine of Arab or uh, the big engineering structures. Um, and I guess I think that's a threat, uh, and I'll explain why as, as we go on, because it's a very different kind of... Uh, um, I mean, the, the idea of the multidisciplinary practice is very different from being in control of a number of different strands of knowledge from within one's own discipline. So when I started the project, uh, the, the, the uh, research project, um, we were already in the process of trying to make sense of how do you communicate a general practice that's very diverse, very heterogeneous, to a client who might be looking to appoint us, say, on a project where they just want us to have done schools or housing or something like that. And it, this is a big commercial risk or threat to us. Lots of clients have said, look, uh, it's very interesting understanding what you do, but we find it very hard to put you into a pigeonhole. And what is it that you do? Um, and we're sort of irritated by this um, uh, constellation of different things. They didn't see that as a. They didn't see that as a particular kind of um, benefit, and it's something that we're still interested in in trying to figure out how we better communicate that. 
But this sort of sifting of projects, I suppose, right at the beginning, um, trying to find continuities through the work of, you know, s sort of what, what were the kind of threads through different projects, um, and construct putting those into different taxonomies. And this is a kind of collage, a literal collage of just cutting and pasting different drawings. We've always had a very rich drawing culture um, based in, in the studio and trying to kind of pull through different projects from different periods. Some of these are sort of initial thoughts. Some of them are photographs of finished buildings. Uh, some of them are kind of competition ideas, projects that didn't go anywhere. Actually, interestingly, some of the most um, if effective projects in the research were things that hadn't gone anywhere, the kind of purity of first thoughts or uh, kind of competitions um, that, that actually failed um, or stalled, um, often had the kernel of something that was much more <coughs> direct. Uh, we went through uh, a a series of sort of seminars within the practice. This is my Cambridge studio where we, uh, before I came to Ghent or Barcelona, we discussed, I went through my presentation and we had a kind of discussion about, you know, some of the, the threads that were, that I in particular pulled out. This is my partner, Ollie Smith, uh, who I suppose would pull out quite different threads in, in, in the work. And, uh, putting together things like this, again, a kind of collage um, approach of pulling together models of long gone projects and uh, photographs and, and drawings in the studio. Um, this was for a, a visit of uh, Leon when he came over to the practice. And this, by the way, were a series of public publications that we've put together to try and sort of solve this issue of being generalists which try and collect together the work into different threads, strands. We call them sector guides. Um, and this is a process of, of kind of trying to sort out stuff and uh, work out, I think in this case, uh, some of the kind of threads, maybe this is PRS2 or something like that, so just trying to um, pull together some of these issues of who are our peers and um, you know the, the interest in sort of working at a city scale and what the what the pedagogical kind of background to that uh, might be where that's come from who did it who's not doing it anymore um, and this is an image that was actually one of the kind of key backdrops to, to my examination, but has appeared for a long time. You might have spotted it on the wall of the studio where it's just a big OS map wallpapered onto the wall. But certainly from the standpoint of coming to Ghent, uh, what, six or seven times during the uh, research um, and coming on the train uh, and, and sort of seeing that um, seeing this sort of pastoral condition, I suppose, that I'm really interested in. I was very struck from uh, talking about the work in this foreign context, um, out of London and away from, you know, fellow, generally, from fellow sort of UK uh, or London ar architects, how particular the work was and how grounded it was in this location. So we have studios in Cambridge and in London, either end of this railway line, and our projects generally kind of are spread out in this very exceptionally sort of diverse, tiny bit of land where you get this bit, very uh, heterogeneous series of conditions from Roman towns to new towns that are just next door to each other. And a lot of our projects lie on these kind of marginal or, or borderline, borderline uh, conditions. Um, so I suppose seeing how rooted our work was in a uh, particular landscape and that had other cultural traditions, so not only located in this uh, East Anglian setting, but culturally keyed to East Anglia, which of course has a very rich um, <coughs> set of uh, 
connections with people like Raymond Williams, who ended up talking about pastoral in, in uh, Cambridge and, and uh, you know, a lot of writing, new nature writing and so on, uh, that um, takes this extraordinary landscape and uh, uses it as an, a way to uh, talk about uh, ideas. Um, and I suppose uh, sort of trying to think about um, through a series of projects, um, particularly this one, which I've been working on for eight, nine years. So, I mean, I guess that's been very useful because um, it, because of its duration, um, the number of different roles that we've played and the number of the sort of spectrum of different sorts of knowledge that we've developed to work in a project as complex as this. Uh, has made it very useful, made it very useful for the research. So this is the Lee River Park, which is kind of sort of two and a half miles of, of very complex industrial land with a hell of a lot of infrastructure running through it that connects the Olympic Park with the Thames. And this is sort of a drawing looking south at various um, new landscapes that will be that will be uh, pulled together over time. But it's where London's growing too, so it's a, a regeneration project. It has uh, landscape uh, attributes and it has infrastructural attributes, but um, uh, a very diverse series of skills that we needed to, uh, to uh, work on this. And you can see it's the kind of bonkers landscape. This is from a, a, a plain somewhere over the uh, River Thames. And this is the River Lee that runs into it. The Olympic Park is just uh, slightly off the photograph. And you can see it's a, a landscape. What really interests me is that this is a landscape given over to the kind of uh, problem-solving thinking of transport infra uh, infrastructure and engineers. Uh, and you can see that sort of uh, it's where infrastructure starts to become diagram-like and, and uh, really becomes a free-for-all. And, and so a lot of our work is about how do you take structures like this, particularly at the moment we're working with um, this little number where there's the Docklands Light Railway and the A13, which is a sort of urban motorway that runs right through the Lee Valley off to Essex, uh, and try and humanise this. How do you make this into a kind of public space? And how, over the duration of um, the project, this kind of starts 2007 to, um, uh, well, just where we are today, kind of somewhere off here, and, and maps a whole <coughs> series of roles from our initial work, which was uh, more traditionally strategic, uh, through to, to uh, a role as a, um, a kind of project champion, I suppose, or trying to keep... Uh, project on track when it looked like it had lost its funding, lost its client because of the uh, various governmental changes after the crash. Um, and trying to, trying to stay involved and committed to a project where actually public procurement ru rules mean that there's no commitment to you. So actually how, how you can be very tenacious in this uh, environment where tenacity isn't particularly appreciated. And how over this time, I suppose, that uh, our role as um, designers changed very, very critically. Uh, not particularly talk about this, I think, but I, I guess the idea uh, of how you take very complex situations and uh, make a kind of commentary about that, and then how narrative starts to help think about sequence and what's important in projects. Um, and that led most recently to uh, actually a piece of work I did just after finishing the, the PhD, which was about, um, well, just really about being really irritated by um, the um, fascination in the UK with the idea of the garden city, um, which is a kind of species of uh, dealing with the housing problem. Uh, and I must say that actually the, the PhD and the process of doing the research has uh, enabled me to connect a kind of political frustration, I suppose, um, with things like um, 
privatization or the corporatization of infrastructure and um, the decay of the idea of planning in the UK with my own practice. And to, those two things have now been uh, brought much closer together, allowing me to have, uh, in the way that Deborah talks about, a kind of voice um, which actually I think is, is uh, lacking in architectural discourse, certainly in the UK. And, and the AJ published this in full, um, which was sort of interesting that um, there was a, that was seen to be a kind of relevant uh, topic for, to pick up and, and publish. Uh, so this is the um, research catalogue that was put together last Christmas um, and uh, I suppose I didn't, I must say I didn't find it uh, particularly stressful. It did take a lot of time but it was <laughs> kind of, uh, <laughs> I, it was fine. Um, I, I guess I just took a very measured approach and made sure that it was kind of put together over a long period of time. But, I was very keen that the work was um, built from the drawings so that the case studies were um, kind of entangled in the narrative or the written work uh, all the way through. Um, and that's actually quite hard to do and it does take a long time because um, uh, it just is... Uh, it, I suppose one, when one starts off, it's all to do with writing, and writing has this extraordinary <coughs> authority, uh, and yet the kind of com combination of writing with a, um, a set of images and, and a set of captions, um, uh, I had to sort of work out how best to do that, and InDesign proved to be the, the kind of tool. And I suppose some other components of... So there's a whole series of case studies... Um, there's an interview with uh, Ellis Woodman, who's an architectural critic in the, in the UK, that kind of drew out some of those uh, connections in the work to, um, that I was really interested in. And then uh, at the end, three um, self-initiated projects that I hope to use to kind of exit the um, research. Um, which made this transition, I suppose, between the very large scale of thinking about the European, northern European sort of edge to the North Sea through to uh, uh, a kind of quarter of my hometown, which is Cambridge, through to uh, a, a building within that and then a kind of intervention, um, which I've titled in this sketch a Cromwellian shit ditch, but was some public toilets. Um, in a, in a park. And two of those, I mean, it's really interesting having these projects because they have their own trajectory and they were projects looking for clients and were um, therefore some of them uh, stalled, one particularly uh, stalled and is still stalled. Uh, one has really, this one has really turned into a real job. So that's, um, this was great. These were two, in fact, three publications um, that have been hawked around to find a, a client. And then this one is still, um, this is the kind of European landscapes um, uh, one idea that I'm still really interested in, in uh, finding a, a, a kind of client or funding for. Um, and I guess things like communities of practice, so there's a very interesting moment of, Coming to, um, coming to Flanders and talking about Flemish architecture, which is exceptionally strong at the moment, and uh, uh, using that kind of frequency of visits to make connections to practices that I was particularly admiring, and actually uh, writing about, I mean, this building, which is the Market Hall in the middle of Ghent by Robert and Dam and Murray Jose Van Hay, was being built. So every, every six months I'd see a, a kind of transformation of that building as it kind of came together. And then I wrote a piece in the Architectural Review that was about it when it had just finished and uh, interviewed the architects and that appeared on my blog and kind of making those connections to them and to other practices like 51 M4E uh, and uh, the landscape architect Basmet. Um, 
was was very useful and kind of opened up a whole series of connections in a very active way that I hadn't been thinking about in terms of my research, but latterly was very important. Um, partly because I used that building as the setting for my exam, and that seemed to be seemed to bring together in a really useful way uh, a kind of activated and contemporary public space that had this quality of being a bit like um, a bridge or a piece of infrastructure and yet had the kind of domesticity uh, and immediate sense of you know something of fireplace for instance kind of uh, house in the, in the city and so it seemed to be a pretty uh, so these were initial sketches just trying to think about the setting of, of of the thing, and then how how I'd um, rather like CJ with his suitcase. How on earth I kind of get it all out again to make it make it um, work, uh, and then just some sort of uh, really charming moments where you know I had to write to the town hall to say, please can I use your market hall to do my PhD uh, fiver in. Uh, and it had to go to a, um, this is from the order of Christoph Peters. Um, it had to go to uh, a kind of vote of all the aldermen in the, in the town hall. Uh, and they all voted and said, yeah, this is, this is a kind of acceptable use of public um, property. And I got this letter back saying, um, you know, with pleasure I deliver you your license and this incredible um, uh, acceptance that this event had its own charm and would contribute to strengthening the social fabric and the quality use of public space in our city. Fucking hell, you know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of encapsulated my gifts. Okay, well, apparently he's not even a very nice guy. <laughs> Um, so these were just, I mean, I, uh, these are just some quite practical things. That, um, this was um, uh, this was my kind of schedule for how I get, um, how I hire a van and then get everything in the van, catch the right ferry, set the thing up on the morning and then kind of install it and, uh, you know, I had to go and get fire extinguishers from somewhere down in the docks and then various other sort of, so there's a sort of technical organisation and I think I found it really reassuring. My background is in uh, building scenery for theatre and, and uh, film, which I did long before I trained to be uh, a designer. Um, and this was like the old days, you know, tearing around Europe in a, in a van with a load of uh, cameras in the back and kind of making things happen and putting things on. Um, and I found that really reassuring to be in control of that uh, and to have my kind of uh, unit ske scheduled just like the old days and then a kind of set of cards that gave me some sort of interval through the hour presentation that ended up like this um, with um, some logs I brought from a wood in England which is kind of warming up the, um, all these people that gradually move from one side to the other. It's got much uh, thinner as the more I talk. <laughs> but what was fantastic about it was that it felt, it really felt as a setting completely uh, supportive and, um, and the sort of city, the way the city went on around me as I spoke um, seemed to again uh, well, it, it was a sort of PhD moment, I suppose, that um, it just seemed appropriate that there's this kind of very rich context of uh, interventions within this sort of medieval city, and the city's infrastructure was quite actively participating in the whole thing going on, plus people walking to work and um, you know trying to buy stuff from the market and uh, taking their kids to school and stuff. And, and, uh, and yet it felt, although I couldn't control any of that, and it might have gone seriously tits up, <coughs> it, it also felt um, like it um, 
was was kind of helping me out. Uh, I think that's my last slide.